I was on a business trip in uh, visiting Kansas City, and I noticed on my way back from dinner, my left foot was flapping. Uh, I couldn't quite control it. Um, I went to bed, and I had a lot of pain in my back that night. The next day, I went to the meeting that, and flew home, and I got progressively worse, and I had no idea what it was. The next day, I went to the doctor, my, my GP, um, who thought it because of other issues I had had that he, his first thought that I had some kind of spinal cancer. So he suggested I go immediately to the emergency room. That first night in the emergency room, it got so that you really needed my help to walk at all. Yeah. And things just started to progress, spiral downward. I couldn't move. Uh, I had very little feeling anywhere below my neck. Then he couldn't close his eyes. And for four days, he didn't close his eyes. I remember being moved to the ICU. I remember my first hour in the ICU, and I remember nothing more about the nine weeks in the ICU. Nothing. So finally, it was decided that he had GBS. GBS, or the Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, is a progressive paralysis uh, that affects patients of any age, uh, resulting in weakness in the arms and legs, uh, with loss of sensation, and in a significant number of patients is considered a neurologic emergency because patients may not be able to swallow uh, or actually breathe on their own. It was like being in a black hole. It's like he fell into a black hole and there was no path of certainty for anything that was happening to him or if that he would get well. And so a woman from Doylestown came and visited us in the hospital through the GBS Foundation. And it, I couldn't wait to see her. You know, it was just so wonderful to have someone out in the world that had, had this one in a million kind of disease. And then the letters started to come, the Yeah, notes. then we started to get notes. And by then, Chip From really, people that had had Guillain-Barre. Right, and that was just so wonderful to read. Ten years ago, I was in the ICU for nine weeks, and that just um, helped me so much realize that, um, that there was hope and that we can hold the fort. So then I started to make progress. Right. Slowly. Yeah. Got rid of the Hoyer lift, got rid of the wheelchair, <laughs> got rid of the walker, got, got rid, rid of, of the cane. <laughs> got, got, got rid of the uh, um, hospital, bed. hospital bed. Like each that thing was wonderful. We, we rolled out of, we celebrated. I came home in mid-March of 2012, so it's um, a little over two years that I've been home. Qualitatively, I uh, have absolute quality of life. Functionally, I can do most everything that I did before. I can play golf. I can... Um, ride bikes. I can be your laborer in the garden. Right, um, to weeds. Ride bikes. To weeds, yeah. I mean, there have been hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that have had GBS, but it's amazing how many physicians never heard of it, couldn't begin to diagnose it, and people go for weeks and weeks, and it, they're just devastated. And the foundation offers a resource for them to gain the knowledge they need to cope with their condition. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope. And that there's, there's there hope. There is and, hope. And the, light, and the likelihood of substantial recovery.